If you have never made an ant nest before, this will be a quick and easy tutorial for you to follow. Trust me when I say this, you will love the results. Pause the video here to note down all of the materials. Our main material we will be working with is called hydrostone, which is a type of cement. We will also need sand to form the chambers and tunnels for the ants, some kind of acrylic to view the ants, small round refrigerator magnets to hold the acrylic, a container to hold the shape of our nest as it hardens, a plastic bag for the hydrostone powder, a mask to protect you from inhaling it, a hacksaw to cut the acrylic, water to mix in the powder, a pencil, and a drill if you plan to drill any holes. Now that we have our resources, it is time to walk you through all of the steps. Step 1 starts with creating the nest chamber for our ants. Get 4 magnets and place them in each corner of the container. Make sure that they aren't at the very edge because we will need the hydrostone liquid to surround the entire magnet in order for it to be held in place. Next, we will need to wet a small clump of sand. This nest will have only one single chamber right in the center. Once we pour the hydrostone into the container, and after it hardens, we will dig out the sand, leaving a cave formation where the colony will live. Around the clump are smaller pieces of sand. We don't want these tiny pieces there. If you can't pick it out with your fingers, you can use a pencil like I do to move it. It can be time consuming if it's scattered into a bajillion pieces, but it's worth fixing in the end. If you are satisfied with the sand, you are now ready to add the hydrostone. This will have to be done very quickly because once the water is applied, it will begin to harden. Mixing hydrostone is 3 parts powder and 1 part water. So, pour some of the hydrostone into a plastic bag. It's important to use a plastic bag because we'll be throwing this away when we're done. If this is your first time ever mixing something like this, I would recommend practicing with just a little bit first. Next, you want to pour in the water, then tie, and mix the bag until it feels like a toothpaste material. If it feels like there are clumps, you'll want to add more water. If there's too much water, either add more hydrostone or try to get rid of the excess liquid. Once it is turned into its toothpaste form, cut one of the bottom corners of the bag with scissors and you're ready to pour it into the container. After you have poured in all of the hydrostone, you want to fix the magnets in the corners with a pencil. If they are too close to the edges, then the hydrostone won't encase it once it is dried. But once you're all done, leave it on a flat surface to completely dry. In the meantime, we can work on cutting the acrylic. Using the container lid as a guide, I marked a light outline with my fingernail and went to cutting. By this time, the hydrostone should have finished drying and it's time to take it out. Turn it upside down and start giving it some slaps. Okay, if that doesn't work, then you just have to keep on slamming it on the ground. But a place where there is some kind of cushioning. If you're having some trouble, I would recommend spraying some water on the top to help soak into the sides. If you keep on being consistent, it will slowly but surely start sliding down. And after all that hard work, exposing yourself to the toxins of the hydrostone powder, the time wasted as you diligently move each individual sand particle the pain, sweat, and tears of cutting the acrylic with occasional neighbors yelling at you because of how loud it was, voila, here it is. <laughs> Guys, when I held this for the first time, it not only had some weight to it, but it felt like high quality. 
Sadly, one of the magnets did not make it. I tried hot gluing it later, but the hot glue just didn't stick. That won't matter anyway, because it will be held by the other magnets when the acrylic is on. This is what it sounds like when you tap it. Pretty solid. As you can tell on all the sides, they are clean cut thanks to the container, except for the back which was exposed to the air. Now for the fun part, digging out all of the sand. I'll clean this out with water later. On the back, I marked a circle with my pencil for the hole I will be drilling in. A while later, I made a few more nests and all I can say is, wow. This material is amazing. Literally looks like it came straight out of a cave. The sand creates these tiny craters, giving it a much more naturalized feel to it. I housed the colony in one of them for a while too, and it looks great. But if you're keeping tiny ants like I am, and decide to move a colony into here, make sure there aren't any tiny cracks. I had a few escape, which is why I put them in this container. Can't wait to see what I do with these nests, and if you guys are making any after seeing this tutorial, send me a message on Instagram so I can post it on my story. Would love to see what kinds of nests you guys make for yourself, and I'm sure others would want inspiration. My name is Enderance, another fellow ant YouTuber, and if you'll excuse me. <laughs>